Hi, this is Steve from 40k Terrain and Warhammer Armies. Let's go make some terrain. We're making tank traps, and I took a block of, of polystyrene that's almost as tall as a, a man or an orc, and I'm going to take and I'm going to bevel that. Once I have that, I want to I want to turn it into a little pyramid shape like this. So I just take a little bit of carve that out with a foam cutter, and there you have tank trap. Very sure. easy. Now holding the foam cutter is a little bit challenging so you might need to trim these off and it's just easy to take the longer knife and cut these if you get more ripples in there than you, you want to see or need to even them up even up quite nicely cutting the pieces out for tank traps and I've already put one together that looks a little bit like this. I need to put a little bit more extra debris and things on there but you get the idea. And all you do, you, we could have used the heat gun again but you know you may not have a heat gun or don't want to mess with that. For this type of stuff here, non-resin, just putting on the white glue will work fine. And one of the nice things about doing the, the white glue is you can always you get that little bit of stuff around the edge so you can add in a little bit of debris right around it. You don't need to worry about making mistakes because anything that you do can either be covered up or or fixed in some way and you know don't ever be afraid to experiment or try something. When you're doing these big piles of rubble, these these are intended to be be piles. So this is a place where you're going to coat most of the this entire pile in the the debris. And the other places, I kind of let it set up so quite a lot of smooth textures were still sh showing through. But this is a pile of rubble, so you want to coat the whole thing. So we got the texture all on. You can see that the terrain pieces are really, really going to turn out pretty nice. Next step is to add a few 40k bits, arms, weapons, all these, you know, all the types of debris from people, maybe a couple dead bodies, and then we'll prime them. One thing that I learned is I, I started making these little craters like this. So now we are starting to actually paint the obstacles and barricades that we've made. And I've taken some gray house paint, added a little bit of acrylic black paint to make it a little bit darker. I want to paint all the flat spots to look like pavement and concrete and then I'll put brown paint on there. I thin the paint down quite a bit. You can see the chunks in the in here are the black stuff. It doesn't mix too well with the house paint but it mixes well enough. And I'm putting it on and using this uh, older brush here and it turns out looking very nicely. looks very good and this is just like painting miniatures you just put it on and
it's a little bit different because you want to vary the uh, the colors a little bit as you do it because it's so you don't want to put it on too heavy and cover up all the detail that you've you know we've been able to, to glue on with everything but pretty much just you know brush it on just like you've done all your miniatures and so many other things and it's it's looking fantastic exactly the way you want it to it's very dry in here tonight and I'm having problems uh, now I put too much water in there you got that way too much water maybe not anyhow starting to put a uh, dry brush you can see this of um, lighter color on the debris this is not a miniature it's very big I'm not worrying about really drying the brush as much as I would if I was doing doing miniatures you can see as I'm doing this the brush has got some fairly wet paint on it this is technically what they call overbrushing, I believe, rather than dry brushing. And you just flick this on there, trying to leave lots of lots of tone down in the depths. And I will, after I do this, I'll put a a wash of dark brown on it to uh, blend it into the background there. My thinking on leaving the colors of this and, and the majority of the other concrete shapes and everything is that the debris came from, from the ruined building, so it should have a similar color to a lot of that, and then I can use other, other paints and stuff to show finished walls and things like that.